everyone! Today I'm doing my last installment of my pencil skirt series. I'm using the same pattern in all of these pencil skirts that I've been making. Today's pencil skirt is made out of this last remnant piece of fabric that I got here. It is a $6 cut of wool and it's this lovely plaid pattern. There is some blues, reds, golds, and greens in here. And I really like it. It's soft. It's just a little bit itchy because it's wool, but it's still really smooth and I really like it. And I got this gold to match it. So I think that'll be a great combo. With today's outfit, you can see that I am not at all a fan of this type of color palette. So, so I really like what I'm going to be making today. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough talking for now. I'm ready to get started on sewing this thing. Up until this point, I've made this pattern four times before. This is the fifth time I've cut out and used the skirt pattern. So at this point, I only need to glance in the directions before I already know what to do. Now I picked this pattern because it was already in my stash. It's not the perfect pattern, I know none of these are exactly what I want it to be. For example, all the skirts I've made using this pattern have been different lengths because I keep messing around with the pattern. But I'm using this because it was already in my stash and it only cost me $1 to begin with, so TLDR, pick which pattern is best for you. Now this video series isn't meant to give you an in-depth analysis about all the pencil skirts and how you should construct them. I've only been sewing for two years, so this video series is merely meant to reflect my own progress and what I took away from this project. Anyway, I want to improve my technique because I'm a lazy perfectionist that loves being a hypocrite that loves finding shortcuts that are more actually like long cuts because they're more of an inconvenience than anything else. I don't follow the directions of a pattern to a T because I use methods I already learned from other pattern directions. So what does this mean and how does this relate to the making of this skirt right here? It means that I didn't even follow the directions properly on this project and I didn't plan to. However, this does mean that I did make some stumbles along the way. Although they weren't really stumbles because sewing pattern instructions assume you know a lot about how to complete a pattern. Pattern instructions are concise. They don't give you a lot of information that you need to know to finish a garment. So I tried out a few different methods I already knew or that I found online until I found one that I liked and then I just stuck with it because I'm lazy. I want to show you guys the first pencil skirt I ever made. It's a 1960s pencil skirt pattern with a waistband and I actually cut out a bigger size than what I typically wear and I don't like it at all. It looks good in pictures and video but it doesn't really look right or feel right when I'm wearing it. I think it comes down to when I was constructing it and looking back now, I like it even less than when I first made it. The skirt was too big and I took it in at the side seams and then it took me forever to straighten out the length of it. I can only take small steps in it because there isn't that big of a circumference to it and I don't have anything to wear it with. I don't think that this is the pattern's fault, but it was something that I made when I'm still learning, which I mean I'm still learning now, but I was a lot less knowledgeable about sewing when I made this skirt and I can recognize all the mistakes because I know I can do better now if that makes any sense. With the five skirts that I've made of this pattern and the three skirts that I've made with this actual series, including the one that you're currently watching being included, I've changed the way I've constructed the skirt to fit how I like to make them. I can list out everything that I don't like about each skirt, but I don't want to take any extra time voicing them out. Instead, I'm going to give you what I learned from these five skirts, although note that these are the things that I hyper-focused in on as a beginner sewer. I don't have any background in this, I have a degree in microbiology, 
but this is my takeaway. One, consider lining your skirt. The sewing pattern I used is for an unlined skirt, but even when the first one that I constructed using this pattern, I had to line it because it feels more comfortable that way. You basically use the same steps as the outer skirt pattern, except you cut the lining a couple inches shorter than your hem and you don't cut out the vent. Then to insert it, you just hide it in the seam allowance of the waist. I just surged my lining to the waistband to save time. Two, if you feel like doing fancy darts where you don't backstitch the tip of the dart and you just hand tie them in, go ahead. It's not anything more difficult than backstitching them. Although I didn't really notice a difference in my dart, but I guess it's a good practice to have. Three, Satin is a really nice lining if your skirt is dry clean only. If you're trying to go cheaper, polyester is fine, I guess, but I found that it was a pain. I'm not going to change anything about my skirts, though, and I'm going to use the polyester lining anyway because that's what I have and that's what I can afford. It's what I purchased, but please, if you can, use Microtex needles if you have them. They give you a much nicer finish than what the universal needles that I did. I really need to get some more. If you're using a invisible zipper, try hand stitching it after you machine stitch or baste it on. The finish hand stitching gives is much more satisfying than a zipper foot. Five, label your facing pieces. I find it really annoying when I attach the facings to the waistband and the seams don't exactly line up at the sides. I actually pinned the pattern pieces to the facing when I sewed them together so I can remember which one is which. It worked perfect. And lastly, number six. I don't know if this is a thing with pencil skirt patterns or not, but I really like doing a line of top stitching down the front of my vent. It helped keep the vent in place and it made it look really polished. Now, I'd like to say a few parting words on this project. Did I actually achieve what I wanted to when I started this project? My goal was to improve my sewing. As a whole, I'd say that I didn't actually get any better at sewing in general, but it did make me slow down and try to improve the quality of my work instead of the quantity I was trying to put out. I do feel like my skirts improved over time during this project, and the last two were definitely nicer than the first two, but I feel like that had more to do with practice. The pencil skirts I made using this pattern make me really happy and make me smile when I pick them up, so I'm really glad that I made them, and I feel proud of them unlike my first two skirts. So I've successfully learned how to make a pencil skirt. Now I have way too many, and I'm not actually going anywhere in these skirts during this pandemic. So I'm moving on from the structured roll aesthetically pleasing fall staple and I'm moving on to the quarantine staple, sweatpants. Tune in during September to see if I can actually make them because I am so scared of pant seams.
Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Catch me on Instagram at whispered moon with three O's and yeah, subscribe.